welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Recently on the channel, I built this, a mini ITX PC with a passively cooled M100 CPU. And this is the hardware I use for most of my desktop computing, with the exception of video editing. So I use this for all of my writing, web browsing, email, things like that. And when I built this, several people asked, could I have chosen a Raspberry Pi 5? And so in this video, we're going to compare the performance of this PC and a Raspberry Pi 5, both running Ubuntu 23.10. Right, before we boot things up, let's take a look at the hardware. And here we have my N100 system, which is a physically much larger than most N100 mini PCs, but has a similar specification. And beside it we have a Raspberry Pi 5, which is equipped with the Pinebury M.2 adapter that I recently tested. And so, like the M100 system, we'll be running Ubuntu here from an NVMe SSD. Specifically, as we can see, we're using a 500 gigabyte Crucial P3 Plus, which is a four-lane PCIe 4.0 drive. However, the Pi 5 has only got a single PCIe lane and is rated at PCIe 2.0, although it can successfully operate at PCIe 3.0 speeds. Meanwhile, on the N100 system, we have a two terabyte Samsung Evo four-lane PCIe 3.0 drive although the M.2 interface on the board is only two-lane PCIe 3.0. So, neither system can access an NVMe SSD at its full speed, although the M100 system has the advantage. Comparing other specifications, the Pi 5 has a Broadcom BCM2712 system on a chip, with four ARM Cortex-A76 cores running at up to 2.4 GHz, together with a Video Core 7 GPU that supports 4K60 output. Meanwhile, our M100 has four Intel E cores clocked at up to 3.4 GHz, as well as Intel UHD graphics that again support 4K60. Both systems are equipped with 8 GB of DDR4 RAM, with the Pis running at 4267, whilst the M100 RAM is clocked at 3200 although some M100 systems can go up to 4,800. In terms of connectivity, the Pi 5 offers gigabit ethernet, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, twin micro HDMI, a PCIe connector that we're using here for the M.2 adapter, two MIPI transceivers, and 40 pin GPIO. Meanwhile, our mini ITX N100 boasts gigabit ethernet, six USB 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, one M.2 NVMe slot, a two-lane PCIe 3.0 slot, two SATA 3 ports, single HDMI, VGA, three 3.5mm audio jacks, and even a DSUB serial port. Excluding a case and SSD, the M100 system costs $187, whilst the Pi 5 costs $126. And it's worth noting that N100 mini PCs on Amazon, including an SSD, start at around $160. Finally, turning to electrical power, our N100 system uses about 11 watts at idle, rising to about 30 watts at load. Meanwhile, when fitted with an M.2 adapter and an NVMe SSD, the Pi 5 draws about 6 watts at idle and up to 16 watts at load. So overall, the Pi 5 is cheaper and more energy efficient, and on paper, a less powerful piece of hardware. However, let's now see how both systems perform in our tests. Greetings. Here we are looking at a black screen as we're connected to the Pi 5, which is currently turned off. And this is because we're going to start with a time to boot test. So I'll turn on the power. And here we go, booting into Ubuntu 23.10, otherwise known as Mantic Minotaur, which is a great Linux distro that runs really well on a Pi 5, especially from an NVMe SSD connected to the PCIe connector. Indeed, on the Pi 5, in many respects, I prefer Ubuntu to Raspberry Pi OS. 
And as we can see, we have a boot time of about 24 seconds, which is pretty decent. And if we run up a browser here, let's run up Firefox. Always good to run up Firefox. And that's pretty quick. It's not absolutely instant, but it's not bad for a, a small PC. That's a perfectly fluid. Let's also run up a LibreOffice Writer to show you that. I'm just trying to give you a feel of this system. It's nice and responsive, perfectly usable as a mini PC. And just to prove we're actually on the Pi 5, let's uh, go to uh, Settings. And uh, in here we can go to About and System Details and we can see some system details. We can see our memory there. We can see we're definitely running Ubuntu 23.10 with the Linux kernel 6.5. We can't actually see our processor here, so uh, let's also run up a terminal. There we are. And if we do an lscpu to get information on our uh, CPU and a scroll up, wait for it, the excitement's killing us. We're definitely running on an ARM system with a 76 cores, and they're running at a maximum speed of 2,400 megahertz. So let's repeat our boot test on our N100 system, and I'll turn on the power. Here we go. And Ubuntu 23.10 is a great Linux distro to run on an N100 system. And that's because to have GPU drivers for an N100 system, you need to be running at least Linux kernel 6.2. And here we're running Linux kernel 6.5. And I know lots of people have struggled to get drivers working on N100 systems, but you're fine if you run the latest Ubuntu, the uh, Mantic Minotaur, which is a uh, staring at us up there, and as we can see, we had a boot time of about 26 seconds. So the Pi 5 does boot faster, although there's not a great deal in it. Once again here on the M100, we've got a very responsive system. Again, we'll launch a web browser. Again, it's on absolutely instant. It comes up, I think, slightly faster than we had on the, the Pi 5 to get to a browser. Again, we'll launch LibreOffice, which you're going to think is, is, it is faster than the, the Pi 5, but they're both perfectly usable. And again, to show what system we're on, let's go to a settings and about. Here we can see what we're running on straight away. We can see our Intel M100. We can click on system details, and here the system can identify our processor. But just to be absolutely the same as what we did previously, let's run up a terminal and do a list CPU like that. And if we scroll up, no surprise, we see Intel M100 with a maximum processor frequency of 3,400 megahertz. And so, in practical terms, my initial impressions of both systems is that they both run very well indeed running Ubuntu. They're both perfectly usable as small desktop PCs. Right. Let's have some more benchmarks, and here we need tests that will run on both an x86 and an ARM Linux system. And so I'm going to stick with some old faithfuls. And the first of these is Sysbench, which I've set up here on the M100. And this is set up to factor prime numbers to a maximum value of 20,000, but with an events limit of 10,000. So this will give us a time in seconds to run 10,000 events, and therefore the lower score we get in this test, the better the performance. So, let's see what the result is on the M100. Let's press Enter. And we've got a time of 2.25 seconds. So, let's go across to the Raspberry Pi 5, where I've set up the same test. So, uh, let's run it on the Pi 5. And there we are. The Pi 5 is slightly slower. 2.42 seconds compared to 2.25. But, again, Pretty similar performance from the Raspberry Pi 5 and our M100 PC. So let's move to another test. And here I'm going to use the GNU image manipulation program, which we installed on both systems. I've got it on the Pi 5 over here. There it is. It comes up nice and fast. These really are responsive systems, aren't they? And uh, we're going to do a new document to the default of 1920 by 1080 resolution like that. And I'm going to do a filter test, which is going to be filter and render and lava. There it is. And I'm going to use the defaults. And what we'll do is to bring up the M100 on the other side of the screen and use the magic of filmmaking to start both tests at exactly the same point in time. And there they go. I wonder which one is going to win. And it's the N100. It's won already. It's massively ahead. What's the Pi 5 going to do? 10.7 seconds compared to the 3.8 
for the N100. And so, in this GIMP filter test, the N100 massively outperforms the Raspberry Pi 5. Right, I thought we'd now do a video rendering test, and we're starting here on the N100, where I've installed Caden Live, and uh, there it is. So let's just bring that in. That was fast, wasn't it? That was pretty impressive. Let's bring in my standard test edit. Here it is, and if you just try and play this on the timeline, you will see using proxies, this plays the transition, no problems at all. There's no doubt you could do some uh, pretty decent video editing here in the Caden Live on an M100 PC. So let's do the render test. Let's go to project and render. I've set up my standard script over here. There it is, so let's start the script. There it goes. It'll give us a time at the end, and of course the lowest time here is the better one. So let's speed on through till we get the final result. And there we are, it's finished with a rendering time of one minute and 23 seconds. So let's now go across to the Pi 5, where I've also got Caden Live installed with the same edit. And again, if I play the edit, you'll see it can play back a transition using proxies just as well as we saw, I think, on the M100. Again, you could do some basic video editing with no problems at all on the Raspberry Pi 5. In fact, I proved this can be done fairly recently when I edited a whole Explaining Computers video on the Raspberry Pi 5. Anyway, for now, what we want to do is to run our render test. So let's go to Project and uh, Render. And I've set up a script just as previously. So let's execute the script. And I should say, this might be a worse result. I'm expecting a worse result than on the M100, not least because the Raspberry Pi 5 does not have any hardware video encoding. So let's speed on until the end of this test. And there we are, a result of two minutes, 10 seconds. Significantly slower, as I anticipated, than the one minute, 23 seconds we got on the M100. But still, video editing is possible. You can do it here on the Raspberry Pi 5. Right, for my final trick, I thought I should point out that both systems have decent streaming media performance, which we can demonstrate here on the Pi 5 by going across to YouTube, where I've queued up a video to play at a 1080p, and uh, there it goes. And we can see there were three drop frames just as things started out and settled down. But once they've settled down, there are no problems at all. We've got very good playback of 1080p here on the uh, Pi 5 in a Ubuntu 2310. And in fact, it's just as good, if not better, in a Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go across to the N100, where it should be no surprise we have no problems playing YouTube footage. Let's again do the same thing. Here we go and uh, no drop frames here. We would not expect drop frames on an N100 uh, Mini PC, or indeed on our N100 Mini ITX PC. But uh, I did think it was important to show you streaming media playback. It's an important part of modern desktop computing. So, could I replace my Mini ITX N100 PC with a Raspberry Pi 5? Well, the answer is, most of the time, yes, it would work no problems at all. This said, my N100 system does have much better connectivity, and I do make use of that, and it's also got an x86 CPU, which means it can run a far wider range of operating systems and applications than the ARM-based Raspberry Pi 5. This said, a Pi 5 is cheaper, it uses a lot less electricity, and because it's an ARM-based system running Linux, it's far less likely to have problems with malware. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.